I'm Shelley Duvall. And I'm Liz. Welcome to Flashback Fairy Tale Theater. Today I'm recapping episode 2, Rumpelstiltskin. Let's get into some background info and a summary of the story. Rumpelstiltskin aired on October 16th, 1982. It was written by producer Gerald Ayers and directed by Emil Ardolino, whose work you'll recognize from these iconic masterpieces. It starred Ned Beatty as the king, Shelley Duvall as the miller's daughter, Paul Dooley as the miller, Jack Fletcher as the wizard, Bud Court as the page, and Hervé Vilchez as Rumpelstiltskin. The set design was inspired by the illustrations of N.C. Wyeth. Now let's get into the story. This adaptation mostly sticks to the original Grimm tale. We open with a king who is bemoaning his unhappiness and inability to find a compatible bride. Many beautiful, eligible princesses are vying for his hand, but- They are poor! Poor! You don't want me to marry a princess who's poor, do you? The king summons a miller to see if the simple folk can advise him better than his courtly officers. The miller pitches his own daughter as the most beautiful he knows. He boasts that she is not only beautiful, but humble, spirited, and talented, and compares her ability to create tapestries to gold, and here some confusion happens. Well, in a way, sir, they... they are gold. In what way are they gold? In a sort of a... a gold way, they are gold. But when we meet the miller's daughter, we find out that her dad is a drunk, she's friends with chickens, and she hates spinning and sewing. Nonetheless, she is ordered by the king to spin gold out of a small room of straw, or else... You will die. Obviously, this is impossible. But lucky for her, a small man appears out of the hay and tells her he can make it work in exchange for a gift. Over the next two nights, the king orders more hay into gold. And the little man pops up and demands greater gifts. First her ring, and then... Would you give me your firstborn child? She agrees. He makes it rain. Well, spin. The king makes her his wife. They quickly have their child. At last, the queen is happy. Are you, girl? The little man shows up demanding the baby, but the queen's tears drive him to offer her an out. Guess his name within three days. The queen beseeches the help of the court to find this man and his mysterious name, but the men of the court have no answers. Well, no one stays in dangerous wood after dark. The queen knows she has friends in the forest, though. Remember those chickens? She can talk to many animals. This fugly yet adorable unicorn brings her to the little man's house, where he's hosting a party of folks singing about how crazy his name is. Luckily, one idiot lets it slip. Good night, Rumpelstiltskin! So when the little man shows up at the queen's door, she is at last triumphant. And Rumpelstiltskin is so mad, he PowerPoint split transitions himself into oblivion. I found this version of Rumpelstiltskin to be excruciatingly boring. And I believe this is largely in part to the adaptation. Rumpelstiltskin is, at its heart, a really dark story, but I don't think that means it needs to be maudlin in tone. There's absolutely no humor in this story, and in a tale that centers around a trickster, that is an insane choice. I think this humorless approach and a lack of enthusiasm led to a truly uninspired characterization of Rumpelstiltskin himself. The script doesn't let Vilches have any fun in this role. Where's the hubris of a man who is so cocky he thinks he can literally put on a show about his name and no one will hear it? Where is the glee in showcasing his talent for gold spinning? The cast is stellar, and they're doing the best they can, but they just have so little to work with. Things that make you go, yikes. While I am someone who generally thinks that dark fairy tales aren't harmful to kids and are in fact enjoyed by them, I find it a little irresponsible in the modern era not to address the elephant in the room for this story, which is... This worthless piece of trash. All of the men in this story are terrible. But even though the 80s were 40 years ago, <laughs> I would have figured we could at least agree that a man who threatens to execute you if you can't do something that's literally impossible is not a romantic hero. And there are ways we could twist the tale to address that problem. What if the romantic hero was the king's son, a kind prince, and it's his dad who gives her the ultimatum? What if this useless wizard character was evil? What if the king realized the error of his ways and sought to make amends to his wife by seeking out Rumpelstiltskin himself? In this version of the story, they make it so the queen basically saves herself. So why not go the extra mile and have her pick up that kid and get the fuck out of Dodge? It's a bummer that they didn't deal with that at least a little more. Another big improvement I think that could have been made was the set design. In the Frog Prince, we saw these fully articulated sets, but in Rumpelstiltskin, we get a lot of this weird green screen stuff. I do think some of it was shot very well. I particularly love these big uh, shots of the straw. And I even think these simple effects of the gold confetti and fabric for the golden thread is very effective. 
like the costumes moderately better in this than the frog prints, though they still look a lot like stuff that I would probably make for a local kids' theater. Sadly, this gold-hungry red-headed king was giving me some major 45 vibes. Blech. I think we can all agree that Best Supporting Actor goes to this incredible trash panda. Great job, you adorable little bandit. 12 out of 10. How about a fun fact? Jack Fletcher not only played the useless wizard in this fairy tale, he also played the useless wizard in 1964's TV production of Once Upon a Mattress, which is a body musical based on The Princess and the Pea. If you want to watch Rumpelstiltskin and judge for yourself, you can see the whole episode on YouTube, and let me know in the comments what you thought.